guess one thing to keep in mind about mosquitoes is that all mosquitoes, and, and you know, there, there are a number of different species, native species as well as introduced species of mosquitoes that you, you may find in Middle Tennessee. But the one thing they all have in common is uh, uh, they, they all have a need for moisture in order to, uh, for the eggs to hatch and for the larvae to grow into adults. You know, really, we have about three kinds. We've got the permanent pool mosquitoes. Those are the ones that are kind of always there year-round, where you have uh, uh, standing bodies of water that are there for at least three weeks or longer. Those mosquitoes, uh, you know, lakes, ponds, uh, uh, swampy areas, stuff like that. And, and those mosquitoes don't fly a long distance usually. About a mile from where they hatch is about their limit. That's about their range. Now, we also have the floodplain mosquitoes. And those are the ones that will, will, will lay their eggs kind of right at the water line. Uh, and then when you have a big rain and the water comes up over those eggs, they're going to hatch. Well, now those are the ones that fly long distance. They can travel, you know, several miles. And then you have uh, kind of the backyard, uh, the container mosquitoes. And those are the ones that really, uh, that, that people, uh, you know, just, just your average homeowner can have the greatest impact on. You know, we think about standing water whether it's a puddle or whether it's a, uh, you know, a dish with water in it or a tarpaulin that's covering a, a boat or maybe a lawnmower or something like that or the grill cover and it comes to rain and you can see puddles of water standing there. Well, when left there for a long enough period of time, sure it can become a mosquito breeding ground. Um, but it doesn't really take that much water and that's the part that people uh, sometimes overlook. You know, think about the gutters on your house. Uh, gutters on the house, you know, you have leaves, uh, seeds and such collect in there, and it'll hold moisture, even though there's not really any standing water, but it's just wet, it stays wet all the time. That's enough moisture to breed mosquitoes. You know, tall vegetation at the edge of a wood line where you've got some shade there and so on, uh, when it stays real damp, there's not a lot of air movement through it. When you have a wet spring, not a lot of air movement. Of course, the sun's not hitting it a lot because it's shady anyway. You can have a, a micro environment down there closer to the ground in that dense vegetation that potentially you could have some breeding take place right there also. If you're not changing the dog's water in a week or the cat's water every week or so, you know, they could potentially be a breeding site. Uh, that water stays there, becomes stagnant. Bird baths, same way. Planters. You know, you have flower pots that have uh, uh, the, the, the water bowls with them. Water that runs out of the plant, uh, out of the, out of the uh, a pot, and collects down there, when it stays long enough, mosquitoes can breed in that. It's only the females that bite, that bite humans, or, or warm-blooded animals, because they're the ones that have to have a blood meal in order to make sure the eggs are viable. The male mosquitoes, they actually just feed on uh, uh, plant sap. They're a nuisance to people, uh, just from the standpoint of, 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 you know, skin irritation, itches, and so on. But mosquitoes can carry disease. Um, you know, West Nile virus is one that, all oh, what came to the United States back in the late 90s, uh, somewhere it's a relatively new uh, uh, disease, I guess, uh, for us. And it showed up in Tennessee in the early 2000s. And I guess since uh, the first case appeared, there have been a few cases of humans uh, contracting West Nile virus in Tennessee since that time. It can also infect uh, uh, livestock, uh, specifically horses more so, I guess, than any other. Not only should we try to eliminate mosquito breeding sites around our homes, but we also uh, should try to keep from getting bit. You know, use a mosquito repellent. Uh, use those. There, there, there are repellents that are approved uh, uh, for uh, 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 people to use directly on their skin. Some are approved to use on clothing and not on the skin. Um, uh, use those when you're going to be outside. Pay attention uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to your schedule. Maybe try to arrange your outside time during times when mosquitoes aren't as prone to bite. Uh, the peak times, I guess, for mosquitoes to bite are uh, uh, relatively early in the morning, uh, again around uh, dusk, and then the early evening time, just when they're most, uh, most active. The application of uh, some of the approved insecticides uh, around shrubbery and so on during the daytime is a way to cut down on, the, on, on adult uh, mosquitoes. So if you cut down on the, the number of uh, uh, young that, that make that transition on into adulthood, then ultimately you're going to diminish the overall population. As people are aware, we have uh, quite a few drainage easements around the area that will collect water during the, during the rain. And once a ditch starts holding water, it makes it uh, grounding areas for mosquitoes to grow and their larvae put in the uh, 
standing water. What we will do within the city of Murfreesboro is go out and put the what's called mosquito dunks, as they're called, discs, what have you, that will float on top of the water. And the discs have BTI, which is a beneficial organism that is lethal to mosquito larvae, but harmless to fish, humans, and other animals. So we just take the, the dunks out of the pack and we just toss them over into the uh, standing water and one uh, dunk will cover 100 square feet of water space regardless of depth for up to about 30 days. This is for residents of the city of Murfreesboro, uh, within the city limits of Murfreesboro. When people call in with a mosquito problem, their neighborhoods, they'll call in and say, hey, you know, we have quite a few mosquitoes out here. We would like to see what you can do. So we uh, explain the mosquito disc to them and try to get the approximate location of where the drainage area and standing water is. And then we'll go out and place the, the dunks uh, in the standing water to help eliminate the mosquito pest problem. Within your own yard, uh, it, oh, we can't go on private property and place the mosquito disc per se, but if if you want to get some at your local hardware store, you can place these in standing water on your own property or ponds, what have you. And even if you have some areas that, that are prone to flood and there's not water there now, but we're going to get a rain, you can take the mosquito disc and put, put like a, a landscape intact or what it's a U-shape or make some out of uh, uh, old hangers and then you can attach it to the ground and that way when the water comes over it, it will be stationary and it will still have the same effect if it was if it was in floating water. And you can purchase these at, at your local hardware stores. Uh, if you have a favorite one, I would call them first to make sure they have some on hand. This is like a 25 pack and it's about anywhere from 20 to $25 a 25 pack.